Hey ladies, this is Erica Johnston and welcome back to my channel. A couple of years ago, one of my first videos that I did was called Eight Ways to Go Gray. And in that video, one of the ways that I talked about was the dye strip method. So I didn't really get into it in length. I didn't really discuss it. And one woman reached out to me, her name is Diana. And she said that after watching that video, she decided to take it upon herself to research that me method a little bit more and then try it out herself. So in today's video, I'm going to be interviewing Diana and we're gonna talk about the dye strip method. Hi, Diana, how are you? Good, good, nice good. to meet you, Erica. So tell me how you discovered the, the dye strip technique. Yes, so I knew I wanted to embrace my gray. I had made that decision, but I don't usually just leap into something. I do my research and I dug into the depths of the internet and YouTube. And what I found after probably um, a good solid week or so of, of really having it consume me was a video by Susan Barnes. It's a 90 second video on YouTube. And she explained what she did. Uh, she didn't have a name for it. She just said, go gray in secret, which obviously intrigued me. And so I saw her explain it very simply. And I thought, that's it. Hands down. That's the technique I'm using. Because for me, going gray by using you either go cold turkey, pixie, highlighting the heck out of your hair um, wasn't okay for me. I needed to find another way. And this was exactly what I was looking for. And I'm pretty comfortable. I had been dyeing my own roots for the last, gosh, maybe year. I had been doing my own roots and then my daughter would help me. She was about 12 at the time with the back side of it. Yeah. Uh, she kind of saw it as like a painting project. So it was fun for her. Yeah. So um, I knew that I could do it at home. And it seemed like a very simple technique. I did check out her video okay. and it was like, it was some, it was on my radar as well when I was transitioning and I wasn't sure, but and then I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do a <laughs> highlight strategy. So I did something totally different. Yes. So I need to know, like for viewers, I'm curious, like what exactly the dye strip technique is and like, can you explain yeah. it, you know, yes. how, how it works? So if the way that it works is that you take a strip of hair along your part line, okay? So at this point, I flipped my part to this other side. So what I'll do is I'll show you, cause I still have a bit of growth. It's probably about seven months of okay. growth. So you can see it's a pretty, it's a pretty harsh demarcation line, right? right? So what I did was I was dyeing the strip of hair along my part line. It's about a two inch by six inch or so, it goes right back to the crown of the head. So there was a bit of hair that went back down the side of the head. And I just kept re-dyeing the roots of that strip only, just that strip, just that strip. It just re-dye every three to four weeks, whenever it is that you need to, um, you see the gray coming in. And then I would, you cut that uh, strip in half, lay it over your gray and your gray just grows down, uh, down the hair shaft longer, 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 longer. And that's it. They, there was no damage because I was still using the same color that I was using. I had a bit of fading um, at the ends because I was only dyeing the roots, but uh, it wasn't too bad for me. It was a pretty high quality uh, dye from a Sally's. So it wasn't like from the grocery store, which may pretend like the box dyes may fade faster. So I found a good quality one. I spoke to my stylist about which one I should use. I did it at home and then uh, when it had grown out, uh, the gray had grown out enough for, for me, it was somewhere around the 12 to 14 month mark. All you do is take your part, flip it to the other side. And now the gray, the strip is just growing out underneath my gray. And now it actually is peeking through, um, and, and showing some darkness uh, against my gray, which looks very dimensional and very pretty. And when I had the uh, strip going, the gray was peeking through my dark hair. And you might think that that little strip, how does that cover your hair? Yeah. And um, I sent you several photos. It actually does. You don't need much. You actually don't need much. So don't choose a very wide strip thinking that you need to. I would actually recommend going, you know, maybe thinner than you think, and then add more hair if you need to. You can always add more hair and dye it. And you can see from, from several pictures, even pulling it back 
it looks beautiful and streaky and intentional. And some people thought I added highlights, um, added gray highlights to my hair. And it was just that gray peeking through that dark hair. It's very, it's a big challenge going from very, very dark to, to gray. And this yeah. was the most simple kind of revolutionary concept I had come, come into contact with that was not damaging. I did not have an awkward stage the entire time. It was fun. It was, uh, again, I, with very dark hair, my hair was not dimensional. It was so dimensional. I loved that when I would curl my hair because it would have the, the dark strip and then the gray peeking out underneath, my curls would be like dark silver, dark silver, Gorgeous. dark silver. As it, was, it was so fun. Yeah. And I was just pleasantly surprised with the whole thing because I didn't really know what it was going to be like for me. And um, I would say that if someone had uh, very thin hair, they definitely couldn't flip their part to the other side um, or they had white, white, white hair uh, coming through. This may not be the best for them because with that strip growing out, if someone's hair was stark white, it would be too much to have that strip growing out underneath. However, it might look really fun to have this little area. So it's kind of up to you, but just know that that yeah. strip does need to grow out underneath your hair. And, uh, but it, it, this is a technique for even someone who doesn't have very, very dark hair. If someone has blonde hair and they just are, don't want to uh, use the other techniques. Your hair color is gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. gorgeous. So can you show us just like a little close up of your hair? Okay, that's so nice, yeah. eh? I didn't make any changes for this uh, right. transition. I kept it the same, but it ended up working out, you know, quite nicely. I think if I had had the long hair, it would have worked out great as well. It's just still would have kind of come down that hair shaft the same way, just would have taken longer to get to the very bottom. Yeah. I think that's a big concern for a lot of women is they don't want to lose length. Right. Yeah. And so some like, that's a nice option actually doing this, this technique because then you don't have to get your hair cut. And you can sort of see whether or not you like it and all that kind of thing. Right. Exactly. There were days that I would just say like, oh gosh, do I, do I really want to be doing this? I can't believe I'm doing this. But it was so hidden and so subtle. I guess the grow out was so subtle that even I was just like, you know what? Just keep going. Like, it's not terrible. You're, it's just peeking through. Like, and, and so it actually got me through those days that I was thinking I may not want to do this because it was so subtle that I just thought, okay, look, just. And it would, because we all have those like questioning, doubting, not sure. Um, and, and for me, it was few and far between, but it still happened. And I thought, you know what? It's so subtle. It's so subtle. Let it, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. I'm so glad I did. Are you really happy about your hair now? I am. I'm thrilled. My goodness. I, I think that this is, yeah, absolutely been a, um, <laughs> a huge blessing. And I've seen some uh, hair regrowth on my hair on my hairline, um, right towards the front of my hair, I had hair growing straight up. Yeah. It reminded me of after I had had my daughters, yes. uh, that the hairs, you know, if you'd, you'd have a bunch of hair and obviously it all fall out and then it would start to regrow. And so I had these just standing at attention bunch up here. And then the really neat one and, um, was that on the side of my temple, I had thinning that I didn't realize I had taken a photo at the five month mark. And then just as a side profile, cause I'd had a, a fun Dutch braid that I had done. And then I took a side profile view on my 12 month cause every month. And I, I started an Instagram account for this, the gray hair journey, because I think it's important to see your progress. It always seems like hair grows so slow, especially when you're like a watched pot never boils. <laughs> so it kind of neat to go back and go, oh yeah, I really have seen the hair has grown. Um, and I, I would always take a front, um, both sides and then a back photo of each month as I would go along. And I was, I saw that and it looked really filled in and I scrolled back to my month five and it, it was, it was pretty bare. So to have, to see some regrowth on my temple, which I had some thinning and then to see some here, it's almost like my hairline was coming forward a bit, which was just, I didn't expect that. I think that the message I would have is that this is such a personal journey, do what feels right for you. And if you if you, if you want to keep the strip longer, if you want to keep the strip forever, do it, do yeah. whatever feels right for you, because you could keep doing this and have that dimension and have that gray underneath forever. This, if somebody wanted to keep that strip, I think that, um, I would 
not do anything differently because I knew that through the entire journey, I did what felt right for me and what was right for my journey. And that being true to that. And I think that that's, um, if people know why they're doing it, um, and they also have to remember to have fun with it too. Um, so if adding color makes you happy, if, you know, whatever it is, if, um, adding some low lights, once you get it in, it makes you feel better or happy about it, do it, whatever feels right for you. Yeah. I really like that advice. I think, uh, I think a lot of women think it's all or nothing, right. Yes. And, and they're scared yeah. and they, they feel like almost like a failure if they add any diet at all. And that's just not right. The case, right? We just yeah. have to play it's hair <laughs> it's hair it's hair let's yeah. not take it seriously ladies it's just hair yeah. and i do think that it's um you know some are they're doing it because they're taking out the toxins and they're and of course they would never put anything any anything else in their hair ever um even you know oh god forbid they put a purple shampoo to brighten the silvers you know that just just too much because it's more chemicals on your hair um, and they've gone to natural shampoos. That's fantastic, yeah. but it's not for everyone. Yeah. And so um, I do think that you just have to do what's right for you and keep reminding yourself, you're head of hair. You are the only one that matters what anyone thinks about it. The only, the other thing, the other advice that I got early on. And so I was saved, I think probably from some, not necessarily heartache, but maybe some harsh words was that they said, do not ask anyone's opinion about your hair. <laughs> it is their opinion is none of your business. Yeah. And I think you have to remember that their opinion of you is none of your business. So I didn't ask anyone. Of course, I was excited about it. And if people will ask thinking that they're going to get this excited response and then they don't and they're crushed. Yeah. So your opinion is the only one that matters. And that is really important as long as you know that you're, um, you know, doing this for your own reasons and you're, you're solid in that. When you're going through from the beginning and you're in the early stages, I think that there is a lot to be said for um, going out and getting a fun, bright top. Uh, jewel tones seem to really pop with uh, gray hair. Um, new earrings, I've been definitely wearing more danglies. Um, and uh, if you can, again, I know these days are a little different uh, than when I was first transitioning to be able to go in and get a cut, just a trim or to go get a, um, even like a hair wash and a blow dry. Through this process, um, there's just a, a lot of self care that I think we should take. Um, definitely join Facebook groups or um, follow, you know, Silver Sisters on Instagram. There's a lot to be said for the Silver Sisters community yeah. and uh, the support that they have in that community for anything that you're going through, whether you're he hearing something negative at work or you have a question about a particular product that you want to use, there's most likely someone who has used it, tried it and had results, you know, they can share with you about it. So definitely surround yourself with others who are also embracing their gray because a lot of people around you like myself were not. And uh, just know that, you know, we are going against a social norm. I think that uh, the number one thing I see being a, a younger individual with um, who's embraced my gray is a lot of like a dog kind of looks confused. Like, <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's not what I expect to see or they hear yeah. a young voice coming out. So uh, just know that um, you are going against um, the, the social norm, but uh, there is a community of women. There is a revolution of women who are embracing their gray and um, who are confident, beautiful, sexy. Just surround yourself with those women and those images to support you in it because you can do it. You are gonna be so, so proud you did. It is completely worth it. And we are here for every step of the way to support you in your journey. Yeah. I've got goosebumps. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got like head, head to toe goosebumps right now. Oh. I'm so excited. Oh, it was so nice to meet you, Diana. So nice to meet you as well, Erica. Thank I you. love your content. I love your message, your messaging, and I love what you do for the Silver Sister community. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you and so much. Uh, you too. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.